Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we're going to be talking about two brands specifically who have already started their Black Friday deals. And there are actually a whole bunch of brands and retailers that have begun Black Friday sales already. And I keep a whole list of them on my shop my page. So I'll leave that link down below in the description box. But that is a place where you can keep track of all current sales and deals and promotions. I also have different shelves on there where you can see like new releases and things like that. So definitely bookmark, bookmark that page. And let's get started. We're gonna be talking about Refer and Phytosurgeons today. Now, both Refer and Phytosurgeons are actually Canadian companies. And I have to say, I love both of them. We're gonna start off by talking about Refer. Refer's sale is 50% off site-wide. So they have some amazing deals. Definitely, you know, check them out. But I wanted to start off with a few of the new items that they have. And we're gonna start off here with this rebalancing essence. So there's a rebalancing essence. Oh, I love the cleanser downstairs. Just one second. So both the essence and the cleanser both come in these uh, metal bottles. You can hear that right here. And they actually come with a cap on the top and then the pump is in there separately. And there are two straws for the pump. So you have a long straw, which obviously is not gonna fit in here, and a shorter one, which is on here right now. And you can just screw that in. But these are both pump dispensers. I think they are great. Let me just show you the consistency here. This is the cleanser. This is gonna be a lightweight gel-based cleanser. And you know, if you get your face wet, put the cleanser on, you're not really gonna remove makeup. If you wanna remove makeup with this, which it will do, you start with a dry face, rub the cleanser on, and you know, emulsify it, then add you know water, rinse it off, and so forth, and you will be able to remove your makeup with the cleanser. However, I do think it's a lightweight cleanser, so you know, it's, for me, I use it as a second cleanse. Now I have to say I do actually like this cleanser a lot because it's not drying. It doesn't make my face feel dry or tight or anything like that. So I personally really like that. Now my husband has skin where he wants the cleanser to feel like it's drying his face out a little bit. Like he, he feels like it's doing something then. So for him, this is too gentle. For me, it's just right. So I actually really, really enjoy the cleanser. And again, I use it as a second cleanse. I also use it in the morning. I keep it in my shower. So I use it in the morning as my uh, you know, face soap. And then we have the rebalancing essence. Now this rebalancing essence you can see is gonna be like a milky watery texture here. And you know, I think it's, it's more of a hydrating essence. So we have glycerin, uh, niacinamide, metafoam seed oil, panthenol, uh, betaine and allantoin. So, you know, we've got quite a few things. It does have a one year shelf life. And let's see here, the cleanser is a one year shelf life as well. They're both eight and a half ounces or 250 milliliters, and they are made in Korea. So overall, I think they are great. Now the essence, I wanna say, I really do like the essence for my face, but my favorite application for this is actually as a body serum. I personally am somebody who, I don't like the feeling of lotion on my body when I'm putting clothes on, like before bed, sure. But when I'm starting off the day, I am terrible about applying lotion. I just don't really like the feeling of having lotion on and then it potentially getting on my clothes. I don't know, it's kind of weird. But I have started using body serums for that reason and I love this for that. And it's a big enough bottle that you know, it's actually a, a pretty good value. You know, if you're looking at things like the Necessaire body serum or the Chanel body serum, which are other ones that I'm using, this is a good value. So I really love it for that. And that's what I've been using it for primarily. And you know, a little bit goes a long way with this and it does add hydration to the skin. So I really am enjoying that. Next, we have the light hydration cream. So this is the first one. My husband's actually been using this since I got this last year. Well, after I used it for a while, you can, it doesn't even look like he's used that much because he's one of those people who like takes the tiniest little dab and then considers that moisturizing his face. But I wanted to show you what the textures look like because there is a little bit of a change from last year. So this is version one. And you can see that version one actually has a different kind of cap as well. You can see you've got kind of this small one here and it has a one year shelf life as well. It's 3.4 ounces or 100 milliliters made in Korea. 
And number two is actually going to be 89 milliliters or 3.13 ounces, one year shelf life, also made in Korea. You can see you have a more robust cap here. And both of these are uh, going to be fragrance free, essential oil free, therefore all different skin types. And let me show you the textures. So this is version one and this is version two. The biggest difference I can tell between the two of these is that version two is gonna be more hydrating. These are both gonna be light gel type creams. So they're still gonna be lightweight. I would say that the newer one though is more hydrating. It's more of a medium weight versus, you know, medium, like medium to high medium. So if you're familiar with, sorry, I just knocked a whole bunch of stuff over. I have a towel here and I, bumped into things. Anyway, if you're familiar with the Biosans Omega um, Squalene and Omega Repair Cream, that's the consistency of version two, in my opinion. It's a little bit more gel-like than that, but that's going to be your closest comparison. I have to say, these are both great basic creams, and for the prices, you can get these on for sale. I think they're totally well worth having. They're also like really gentle, so it's something that I'm not worried about putting on like my kids or anybody. And if I'm having like sensitive skin and so forth, you know, having a, a, an allergic reaction or something, this is something that I reach for. So I would have to say I really like it. By the way, I have been testing all three of these products for about a month. So I would definitely recommend looking these up during the sale. If you're interested in any of these items, you know, my personal favorite would be the essence followed by the cleanser and then the uh, cream, but I think they are all really great value. And I wanted to go through my top 10 refer brushes. So these are the top 10. I've got a recommendations video that I filmed back in March. I'll leave that linked down below in the description box where I go through more like favorites if you're like building, you know, starting from scratch and so forth, what I would pick up and things like that. So that's gonna be a little bit more detailed, more options there. But if you're looking for the absolute top 10, including these new brushes that have just come out. That's what I'm going over right now. So we have Refer 31. This is the foundation brush. This is a stippling foundation brush. You can see that you've got some, some fibers here that are a little bit more lifted than these and it's angled. Look at how this performs. It's dense, it's smoothing. It's my favorite foundation brush right now. It's, well, it's definitely one of them. I'd say like in the top two. I have two of these and I use one pretty much every day right now. Uh, you can see I just, this is the one I use today. So uh, yes, this would definitely be in my top 10. Another one here, this is the new 37 cheek brush. This is a blush brush. I love dome shaped blush brushes because they have enough density to work with cream products, but they also have enough fluffiness to kind of buff them out and work really well with powder products as well. So this is my favorite cheek brush from Refer. I absolutely love the shape and the size of it. It's just very versatile. I think it is the quintessential blush brush. Longtime favorite for me, this is the 24. And you can see this is gonna be kind of a dense mini like buffing brush in a way. So you can use this to buff in powders. You can use this for blush, for bronzer. There is a bigger version of this, the 22. That's a little bit too big for me, but that is gonna be more similar to your Tom Ford bronzer brush. So that's gonna be a big, you know, fluffier bronzer brush, but it's gonna be the same shape. This is kind of the, the little baby sister of that brush. And I personally like this one for bronzer. It fits better. You could use it for contour as well if you are working with a shade that doesn't need to be super precise because it, it is a little big for that. But I like this for bronzer. I'll also typically then use it for blush on the same day but it has enough density here that you can also use this to buff in powders like meteorites and things like that as well. So another favorite of mine. And then the Refer 20 Fan Brush. This is, I mean, like, I don't even know why. Like, when I first saw this, I was like, there's no way this will be a favorite. I'm not, a, I'm not somebody who loves fan brushes. It's, you know, it's just a fan brush. But there's something about this brush that I have just loved for years now. It's got the perfect amount of wispiness and the perfect size and shape to add subtle highlight. And that's what I use this for. You know, that is my favorite application for it. 
and it happens to be my absolute favorite fan brush. Now the rest of the brushes in my top 10 are all eye brushes. And I have to say, like shader style, I do typically gravitate more towards my Sonia G brushes for shader style brushes. If you've been following me for a while, you know the Sonia G soft shader is my all time favorite eyeshadow brush. But I think Refer is really great for crease brushes as well. Um, you know, they, I love their crease brushes. The, a couple of these are dirty, I apologize, but this is a 27. This is your all purpose crease brush. So if you only wanted one crease brush, this would be my recommendation. You can see here that it's kind of a medium size. You've got a bit of a domed shape here. It's just gonna be incredibly versatile. But I, they have like four different sizes of this same shape. This is 13 and 15. This would be my favorite combination because you know, my features are a little bit smaller. Uh, if you do have larger features, you might wanna go with 14 and 16. It's just slightly different, slightly larger versions of these. But you can see here that you've got these two great crease brushes. And I mean, look how fluffy they are, yet they still have some density in the middle for, you know, making sure that your placement goes where you want it to go. So I think, I think Refer does crease brushes super well. I highly recommend them. And then a shader style brush. This is the Refer 28. I really like this one because it is going to be on the smaller side. It has a bit of firmness here. You can see that you've got this rounded edge here. This makes putting on either like a wet shadow very well, a cream shadow, or metallics. And you can get in that placement really well. And you can see that this brush here is thin enough that you can also use it under the eye. So it's gonna be your versatile lid brush, in my opinion. I really like this one. Next up, we have two pencil brushes. So this is a 03. This is one of Refer's most popular brushes. This is great for inner corner, under the eye, and so forth. You can use this for smudgy eyeliner. It's a nice medium small pencil brush. But I also really like larger pencil brushes. This is 26. This is gonna be one of my favorites because again, you can use this the same way as you did for 03, but it's gonna be a little bit fluffier, a little bit softer. It's gonna work well in a larger area. And I think with this size here and this angle on the side, you can totally use this for like outer edge work and so forth, smoking things out. And this brush in particular is the perfect size that if you wanna take a like smudgy eyeliner pencil like the Victoria Beckham Scent Eye Cudgels, put that on, then you wanna smudge that out and use that more like in a larger area, more as like an eyeshadow. This is a, a great brush for that. You know, you can, it's got a point where you can be a little bit more precise, but the angle and size of the edge really makes you be able to get more of a wash of color with that. So those are my top 10 brushes from Ruffer and I use these all the time, literally every week. So I hope that was helpful. Let's move on to Phytosurgeons. Now, as I mentioned, Phytosurgeons is a Canadian brand as well, and they're a small indie brand. They have become fairly popular in people who know about them because they have some really great products. They are a small company, so things kind of sell out quickly, and then there's a while before restock, but you know, they are fantastic. They're doing 15% off and this is their first sale of the year, their only sale of the year. So if you are interested in trying Phytosurgeons, definitely check it out. And I thought I would just go ahead and swatch everything that I have from Phytosurgeons. But first I wanted to mention the two brushes that they have that I recently picked up. So I have the Sky Buff here and I do have a demo showing you the Sky Buff and then the sky fluff so these are synthetic you can see the sky buff is going to have a little bit more density in the center but it is kind of a fluffy cheek brush whereas the sky fluff is going to be larger this is great for like powder and things like that which by the way they don't make powder so uh this is also great for you know buffing out some of the cheek products as well but these are nice brushes. You will have similar brushes in your collection unless you are just starting a collection. So it's not necessary to get these to use those products, but they are you know, good options if you are looking for something like that. 
So I wanted to start off with the phytosurgeons blushes. And we're gonna look at this demo while I'm talking a little bit about these, but these blushes are special. These are called Skin Spark. And I know a lot of people really love those Shiseido air whipped blushes that came out a couple of years ago. And then they discontinue them. Shiseido is notorious, at least here in the US, for you know bringing out a product, it does well, and then they discontinue it months later. And that's kind of what happened with the air whipped blushes. These are kind of the same thing. I mean, they're not exactly the same, but they're going to be fairly similar. Now, I do want to mention that I left a couple of my shades I hadn't used for a while. They did get some sort of like salt crystal on the top of the blush. It was not like mold or anything like that. It was separation of the product. And these products, you know, they are more on the natural lines. They're handmade. That is normal. It's okay. It's totally safe. So just wanted to give you a heads up. It literally looks just like salt crystals on there and I just wiped it away. So I just wanted to give you a heads up um, that that did happen with a couple of my older blushes that I hadn't used in a while. So as you could see in the demo, these do have kind of this like whipped texture. I mean, look at that. This here is the shade Shimmer. And let's go ahead and buff out this portion here. Look at that. You can see that this one here is gonna be a warm pink with some peach in there. There's a little bit of orange. It's kind of more like a salmon pink. So I think it's a really beautiful shade and this is one I like a lot for the summer. And then another shade here is called Fume. And here's Fume. This one here is going to have more of a, uh, kind of like a, a tan in there, a little bit more beige, there's brown. But again, we do have kind of that undercurrent of a warm pink, and there is a tiny touch of mauve in here as well. So it's a pretty unique shade. And then two of the newest shades here, this is Condensate, and this is probably my favorite of the four that I have. So you can see here, oh, let me swatch a little bit more here. You can see here that this is kind of your dusty mauve shade. There's a little brown in there, but this is gonna be cooler in tone. And it's kind of like when you buff this one out, I mean, you kind of have that fawn brown mixed with mauve. And I think it's a really beautiful shade and it's really great for this time of year. Now on my skin today, I use another one of their newer shades. This one's Evaporate. And this is gonna be warmer than Condensate. And you can see there's a little bit more of that like warmer, like golden tones in there and so forth. But this one's also gonna be more of that nude brown. You've got some like peachy golden tones in that one. So these are the four that I have. We have, again, Simmer, Fume, Condensate, and Evaporate. Next, let's take a look at the Spectral Shines. These are their highlighters. This is the old packaging, this is the new packaging. And I'm gonna show you this demo while I talk a little bit about these, but you can see here that during this demo, I actually use this with two different brushes, so you can see how it applies, but I use a Sky Buff brush, which again, I did also use in the demo for the blushes. But notice when I am getting the product on the brush that I'm actually pinching the bristles here to really get this up. This product, is very, very firm in the pan. Now my older one is more firm in the pan than the newer ones. They did kind of soften it a little bit when they, you know, based on like feedback, but it's still gonna be a very firm product. You want something dense to pick it up. But this is a product that when you buff this into your skin, you just get this ethereal glow. And it's so subtle, you can't actually see anything as makeup. You could use this, you know, without any other makeup products, just to give your skin a little bit of glow and like light to it. And nobody will even know it's a highlight. <laughs> so it's just really beautiful. They've got a really gorgeous range of shades, and I have two of them. So let's take a look. This one here is the Spectral Shine in uh, Fresh Fog. And I mean, you can see how much I was rubbing that. This is Fresh Fog here. And let's go ahead and kind of buff that into the hand here. Look at that radiance. It's so pretty. And when you buff this in, I mean, you, you're not gonna see like edges or anything like that. 
And then we also have this one here, which is called Divine Daylight. And you can see this one's gonna be a little bit deeper. I mean, look how new this looks, even though I've used this several times. And you know, it's an, I actually recently picked this one up a few months ago, but I've seriously used this probably like 10 times. But you can see how little product you actually need there. And this is gonna be more of that like champagne shade there. It's not quite gold. It's definitely gonna be more neutral than a gold, but you're going to get kind of a little bit of warmth with that, just like a sun, you know, the sun shining on your skin. So it's a really appropriate name. So these are the two that I have. I have to say, I really do like these. And just so you know, for the packaging is click closure and there is a mirror in here. So uh, when I did the demo, you could see I also used the Refer 13 brush, which is kind of, it was their first foundation brush, but I always used it for cream blush. I really like that type of brush for this product. I think it buffs it in easily because it's such a dense brush with a lot of, well, <laughs> it, it's kind of got a lot of bristles packed in a small space, so that's a dense brush. Um, but because of that, it's it picks up the product really well and it buffs it into the skin really well. So that's my preference for using that. I typically use that refer brush. And next we're gonna move into the eyeshadow. So we have a plastic lid, but this is gonna be a glass jar here. And the texture of these is going to be kind of in between the highlighters and the blushes. Let's take a look at this demo here. And you can put these on very easily with either a finger or a brush. They are smooth and creamy, but they're not as creamy as like the whipped blushes. They're gonna have a little bit more firmness to them, but yet they're not dry. So if you are familiar with the uh, let's say the tom ford or the charlotte tilbury cream blushes and the chantecaille cream blushes which are really more of a dry they're like in between the two of those so because of that these shadows actually work really well for people with oily lids as well they kind of stay put fairly well and you know i think they've got some gorgeous colors so we're gonna go ahead and swatch the shades that i have this one here is Defiant Dahlia. So here's Defiant Dahlia. Look at that. And you can see some of these are going to have some shimmer. Some of them won't. Uh, some of them will also have a little bit of a color reflect as well. This one here is Chilled Cherry. This is one of my most used shades. I love this shade. So it's actually, you know, although it says chilled cherry, it's gonna be more of a neutral shade with just a hint of cherry in it. And I just think it's so beautiful on the eyes. It's a really nice neutral. This one here is Wild Oak. You can see mine has cracked. This is one of the first shades that I picked up from them. Um, so it's, it's a while now. But you can see this is gonna be kind of your antique gold but it actually has a little bit more brown in it than gold, making it just a little bit more uh, neutral, a little bit more everyday. This one here is another favorite of mine. This one here is called Oxidized Olive. Now they call it Oxidized Olive. It's really not that green. I consider it more brown with a touch of olive in it. Um, you know, let me re-swatch that. I think I got a little bit of something in there. All right, so yeah. I mean, it's oxidized olive, but it's really, it reminds me more of kind of a, a grayish brown, not quite taupe because it's a little bit more gray than that with maybe the faintest hint of olive. So I, I don't really consider it a green shade. This one here is Wild Wisteria and it's a really pretty, like more of a bright springy purple. Look at this, it's a really nice lavender. And it's pretty balanced between the blue and the pink tones. Here we have Orchid Overload. And this is a really beautiful, more of a champagne shade with a lot of shimmer. Oh, I apologize. I, all right, let me re-swatch that. This is Orchid Overload. I found out what the problem is. I have, uh, I was wiping my finger on the part where I wiped off the blush swatch. So I apologize for that contamination there. But you can see that this is gonna be kind of more of a rose gold champagne with a lot of shimmer. This is one that you can use more as a topper if you'd like, and um, you know, or you can use it on its own, but it's gonna be on the lighter side. One of my other favorites here, this is Velvet Leaf. This is a really special shade here. 
this is your green if you're looking for a green and actually it doesn't show as well in the swatch here mine's getting a little drier because this is one of the first shades it is the first shade i, I purchased actually from them so it's a couple years old uh, but you've got this green and then it will have kind of this brown reflex and one of those reddish brown reflex so you know it really looks more like uh like a redwood tree magnetic maple this is probably my most used shade and look at this this is going to be your taupe so it's going to be a soft light taupe this was the primary shade that i used today and i love it whenever i i want to put something on but i don't really feel like doing makeup <laughs> That's, a, that's what I reach for, I put that on. This one here is Deeply Rooted. So I use this one as a liner today, but it's another beautiful shade. You can see this one has some reddish undertones, but it has more of these like gray overtones here. So you can see, depending on if you layer it up, you're gonna get the gray. If you blend it out, you're gonna get more of this reddish brown. And then this one here is Fractal Freesia. And you can see this is gonna be another one of those lighter shimmery shades. It's gonna be warmer, a little bit more of a champagne gold versus the rose gold than the other one that we looked at. And then last up, we have Pewtered Pine, which, you know, this one to me, I really don't understand the name for this one. This one actually is more of a grayish plum. So, I mean, it's a really beautiful shade. I really love the shade. I don't understand the name with it, but you can definitely see that when you buff this out, you get some of those plum tones to it and you get this really beautiful silvered pewtered look when you build this up. So I have to say, I mean, I think their shades in general are gorgeous. They have a lot of shades to choose from and they have other shades I did not purchase. These are the ones I've been collecting over the past couple of years now. And that's my collection for phytosurgeons. I have to say, I really like these, but I did want to share the swatches because I know several of you have expressed interest in, you know, uh, trying out the brand and I would highly recommend it. I think they are a really great brand. They are an indie brand. So keep in mind, shipping might be a little bit slower than you might get from some of the bigger brands because they are doing this all by hand. And it's like a team of two people. So give them a little grace with that. And I hope this was helpful. So. Definitely let me know if you're interested in picking up anything from the refer or the phytosurgeon sales. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And I hope this helped. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you very soon. Have a wonderful day.